For this first session, we'll cover flight basics. The default flight control will be set to the mouse if no joystick or gamepad is detected. You can change the control setup as desired in the options menu. For mouse flight control, you can select either a point mode or a direction mode. The point mode will let you control your ship using a visual marker on the screen. The direction mode will let you control your ship based on how much you move the mouse. We'll start with velocity control. If you're using the mouse for flight control, you can use the wheel to adjust the velocity setting, or the default 1 to 0 keys to set it by percentage. The default plus and minus, or W and S keys, can also be used to trim the velocity setting. You'll notice the SET indicator will reflect whatever level of velocity you select, while the FVL indicator will display your ship's actual forward velocity level. Increase the forward velocity setting to maximum now, and observe how the ship's computer will apply forward thrust until the FVL value matches the selected SET value. Good. Now reduce your forward velocity setting to zero. If you're using either the mouse or keyboard flight control mode, you can hit the backspace key to immediately set velocity to zero. In addition to setting a desired velocity level in the positive range, the flight control system also includes the ability to select a negative velocity level. The plus indicator on the ship's status display will change to the letter R to indicate that the full range of velocity control has been enabled. Activate the full positive and negative range of available velocity control now by pressing the default right shift key. With the full range mode enabled, the middle SET level will be zero velocity, while lower levels will be negative and higher levels will be positive. The trim controls will let you select SET levels in either the positive or negative range. You can disable the full range velocity control mode now if you want to by pressing the right shift key a second time. In addition to your main engines, your ship also has a series of thrusters at various points on the hull. These thrusters are automatically controlled by your onboard computer to help keep your ship moving in the direction it is facing, but you also manually control the thrusters to rotate your ship and perform maneuvers. Use the current flight control device to yaw left and right now. Next, pitch up and down. Good. The last rotation control is roll. For keyboard and mouse flight control modes, use the default Q and E keys for rolling left and right. Roll left and right now. In addition to rotation and velocity control, you can also move your ship directly left, right, up, or down by activating the horizontal or vertical movement thrusters. On and off control for these thrusters is available using the default A and D keys for left and right horizontal movement, while the Z and X keys are used for up and down vertical movement. You can also add variable horizontal and vertical thruster control if the flight control device you're using supports enough access channels. Try moving horizontally left and right now. The longer you activate a thruster, the faster you will fly in the opposite direction. When you disengage a thruster, your ship's computer will automatically apply counter thrusters to realign its course with the direction the nose of your ship is facing. Now try moving up and down using the vertical thruster controls. Again, the default key controls for up and down vertical thrusters are Z and X. Well done. Flying in space involves mastering the effects of inertia. The Inertial Dampening System, or IDS, will help keep flight control simple by constantly using your thrusters automatically to keep your ship moving in the direction it's facing. The more momentum your ship has in a particular direction, the longer it will take for the IDS to alter your ship's movement toward a new heading. When you want to bypass the system and allow your ship to continue moving in a certain direction, press the IDS on-off key, default spacebar. The inertial label will be visible on your ship's status display when the IDS is off. Practice by building up speed in the direction you're facing, then turn off the IDS and rotate around a bit to see how inertia will let you continue moving in the original direction. Turn the IDS back on to resume automatic thruster control. The IDS also supports adjustable throttle scaling. There are nine levels you can select, and the current level is displayed at the right of the IDS indicator on the lower left cockpit display. X1 is the default level, and provides the lowest level of throttle input range that is good for situations that can require rapid course changes, such as combat and docking. X9 is the highest, and provides the widest range of throttle input, but it can take much longer for your ship to adjust course at higher speed settings. Try increasing the IDS scale value now using the default numpad 9 key. Then change the throttle SET velocity level to see how the scale level impacts the input range. 
Return the IDS scale value to 1 when you are finished, using the default numpad 7 key. Your ship is also equipped with an afterburner, which provides a high level of thrust from the main engines. Use it sparingly, as it consumes a much greater amount of fuel, but it can be very useful in combat when you need to escape or change direction quickly. To engage the afterburner, press and hold the default tab key. Practice using the afterburner now by accelerating to twice your ship's maximum cruise speed, then release the key to disable the afterburner. That completes the basic flight control training section. The next section will cover cockpit displays and HUD heads-up display systems next.